Right, so welcome. Um, my name is Mariusz. I'm a lecturer in um, computer science department. Some of you had courses with me before. Um, we will have a certain number of students, so I just checked on the blackboard and we supposed to have 19. I don't know if we will have 19. I was I talked with Christopher and he told me that we might have about 15 students, so I was thinking of having four groups. Um, but we, we will kind of um, arrange it next week, I guess. We have um, two slots. Uh, one slot is on Monday and one slot is on Tuesday. The Monday slot is more for you to meet and work in a group. There will be no lectures on Mondays. Uh, the lectures will be on Tuesdays. So today, like the, the slot that we have today is the kind of a lecture slot. And the Monday allocation is just for you to do some group work. Uh, there will be no lectures. But you have a room booked and you have free time so you can meet as a, as a group, right? Um, so that's about uh, um, Monday and then Tuesday. Tuesday lecture. Um, the lectures are streamed and recorded. Um, although today I'm not streaming uh, because it's a little bit informal, so if something happens, I can delete it. So I'm recording it, but I'm not streaming. Normally I will stream the lectures. So if you are a remote student, you can participate in the class by watching the stream. Um, they will be on a YouTube channel, um, uh, the one which we use for all the, all the lectures. And also we will use uh, Discord um, for communicating and for discussing. Like if you have you been on Discord already? Um, so there is a, um, a Discord server with the channel which is called IMT4306. Um, and that channel will be the discussion channel for this course. So all the announcements and everything will be on the, on the channel. Um, if the class is canceled or if we're doing something else, I will post it there. I will make some main uh, announcements on Blackboard. So Blackboard um, will be used as well, but um, it's only for announcements. We will not keep uh, any resources or anything on Blackboard. Uh, so I will email you a, a general email about all of it through Blackboard, uh, but everything else will happen here. And then we have another system which is um, based on GitLab. Um, so GitLab, um, it's g, it's git.gvkidimtnu.no. So I will I will make it in the email, right? So. All this information will be in the email. And this GitLab server is with the lecture materials, with the wiki, and with the issue tracker. So if you have any issues or any questions or anything, you should do that through the issue tracker. If you have some sort of a comment or question, like a quick question, you can do that through the chat, right? Um, I prefer you not to email me, but if you have to email me, yes, sure, you can email me, but I check those two things more frequently. So if you need kind of an answer faster, use the Discord. And you can message me on Discord, like uh, through, the, through the message. Um, right, so the, the lectures are recorded. Um, we will meet on Tuesdays. On Mondays you work uh, with the groups or individually. Uh, we will use Discord and GitLab. Uh, who hasn't used GitLab before? Okay, so quite a few of you. Um, GitLab is like a, it's like GitHub, but it's a different system. So it has an issue tracker and a wiki and a repository. We are probably not gonna use the repository for the course. We will use the wiki and the uh, issue tracker. Uh, have you used GitHub or uh, any other system? Yeah of that sort. So we tend to use those systems for some of the computer science courses here. Um, and Christopher will use it for the serious games as well. How many of you are taking serious games too? All of you, right? Because you don't have much choice. So uh, yeah, so it's very similar setup. Um, he will use the same uh, Discord server with a different channel. And he will use GitLab with the 
uh, with the course materials. So all you need to do for GitLab is uh, you need to register yourself. Um, you can use uh, email <coughs> that you want. You don't need to use the NTNU email, although yeah, may maybe we prefer you to use the NTNU email. Uh, and then in your bio, uh, you have to specify kind of uh, details about you, including the student number and like uh, which program you're doing. So you say like a master student and so on, because we will use the bio to filter the students who are who are not in that program anymore, right? So make sure that in the bio, once you register, you edit your profile, that you put kind of a proper information about yourself, including your n real name, uh, surname, and the student number. Um, when you register, you can pick a kind of a nickname for yourself, but also pick something that is recognizable, um, that we can link you to that, to that person. Otherwise, we will kick you out. Um, <coughs> All right, so this is uh, more or less kind of a logistics of the course. Any questions about it? Yeah, great. So I will kind of sum it up and I will uh, email you uh, again the links and the details of this and the invite to Discord through the uh, Blackboard after the, after the lecture. Um, I don't have anything for waiting. That's not, that's a fiberglass actually. All right, so about the course. Um, I will assume that we have more students. If we have less students, we might modify the format. But if we will have um, approximately um, 15 or so students, then what we will do is we will divide the, the class into, two, in, into uh, four groups. So we will have um, four groups and we will have four main topics. Um, so each group will pick one of the main topics and then you will work in the group on one of the topics and then halfway through the course we will rotate so some of the groups some some of the people so if we have uh, four groups and this is topic one two three four then at some point people who are working on topic one will stop working on topic three and so on um, with some of the people mixing so some of the people will change the groups some will stay with the people from from the same group and then you will work for the second half of, on a different topic, right? Um, and each group work will prepare a group report. Um, so that means you will have two group reports. Um, oops, for the two tasks, for the two uh, topics. And then at the end, you will have one individual report. Um, Right? So you have to write three things. Um, and that's how we will do the kind of the assessment. So there will be two group reports plus at the end one final individual report for, the, um, for your kind of contributions. And um, because, let's say, um, you will be part of group one, uh, talk dealing with the um, with particular topic, and then you start working on topic three, but you will not start on topic three from scratch. You will actually start on topic three based on the results of the previous group which had topic three. So you will have to make kind of a assessment of what they've done. So what we will do is you will be graded, not not graded. You will be kind of assessed. Um, yeah, it's not formally assessed neither. It's like you'll be reviewed, right? So you will be reviewed by the group which takes over your work, and you will review the work which you take from the group that was before you. Does it make sense? Uh, professor, yeah. Uh, I have one. For example, four people are one team. Yeah. And 
in half of the semester they will work on let's say mobile and uh, in this next half that, that four people will work on variable or something like the group will move or one person from the group will move yeah so i it depends how many students we have um, but what will happen is we will um, so let's say you are with three other people yeah. working on topic one yeah. and then after the first semester you uh, after the first half you will start working on topic two with two different people right yeah so if we have enough people we will do that if we don't have enough people it may happen that you will continue working with one person which you already worked like if we don't have enough people to kind of mix everybody that you could get a completely new group, right? So it, uh, a little bit depends on how many students we have, this exact rotation. The idea will stay though. So the idea stays that you will work on two topics and then you will have uh, two reports, two group reports to, to finish and one uh, individual report at the end, right? And then at the end of the course we have an oral exam, uh, which is individual also, right? Uh, and the oral exam will cover all four topics. So we will cover all four topics in the lectures and we will kind of cover all four topics in the class, right? But you will not directly work with the all four topics. You will only work with uh, two. Uh, and because you will only work with two, you need to learn about the other two, right? So what will happen is each group will kind of present before the rotation happens and bec before the end of the semester happens, each group will present the topic they were working on to the class, so then everybody kind of learns about it, right? And how the work will look like? The work will um, look depending on, um, because it's a research, research class, right? You will have another class, which is integration project, where you will be developing a system. And the research component over there is very minimum. The, uh, the focus is on you developing and using tools and developing a system, right? This course is kind of an in-between. So we can shift more towards the development or we can shift more towards reading research papers and doing some analysis, right? So how many of you have um, experience with mobile development, with Android or iOS development? Have any of you developed? Uh, cool. One? Who wants to learn about it? Yeah, Flutter or yeah, or Kotlin, right? Um, so it depends, like, because it also depends who you will have in the group. I will not tell you uh, whether you should develop anything or not. This decision is a little bit up to the group, but you can either develop something and do some proof of concept, or you can do an analysis of how something should be developed based on research papers and uh, reports, right? So this part is a little bit up to you. You have the flexibility here. In integration project, you have to develop things. In the next semester courses, you have to do research. There is almost no development. Here, you're kind of a little bit in between, right? So if you want to learn how, for example, do some implementation, some integration of mobile application with something else, then you can do that. But if you rather read research papers and do some analysis of what other people research was, that's fine as well, right? So, um, we will discuss it in the class, of course, and each, each group will kind of discuss it with me also, what they, what they will do, right, uh, for, the, for the task. Um, but how much you want to develop and how much you will just do conceptual work is a little bit up to you. So if, for example, you have uh, team members who are more theoretical, but you want to tinker something, they can do a little bit more analysis and you can do a little bit more implementation and together you can have some proof of concept with some research based, right? Um, the, so what, what is important is that I need um, you to prepare the report and the report can be a research report or can be a technical report on the implementation or can be both, right? So if like, for example, he works on some implementation, he can contribute some description of the implementation to the report and the other group members will do more of a analysis like a background study or literature review, right, for that topic. Um, so that the, the report can be kind of a technical, a technical report or it can be a research report. You, you understand the idea here, the, the difference? 
So the technical report describes some sort of artifact, some sort of a system which has been developed and the way how it was developed, why certain algorithms were used and so on. Research article is more about conceptual work on what other people did before and what you kind of synthesized or what you analyzed, right? What are the, and um, it can be for example like a plan of how something should be developed but you haven't developed anything, right? Um, so it, this is up to you, right? Um, any questions about this? Okay, so then we have the, the actual course, right? So the actual topics that we will cover. Um, and here, um, if you check the course description, we have kind of a large number of different topics which range from um, mobile technologies, um, gamification, mobile games, mobile user interfaces, um, you know, the, the space is quite broad. There is a lot of different aspects that we can analyze. And in the past, what we did, we had uh, research articles in different domains, for example, efficient usage of memory on mobile devices, or uh, for example, how to optimize the performance and storage while using mobile devices with cloud services. Because for example, you can do processing on the mobile device, but it takes long m more time, for example. But if you pass the data to the cloud and do like, for example, machine learning in the cloud and just download the model, that might be much faster. Like you can do processing more faster on the cloud because you have more computational resources, but you need to transfer the data, right? So there are some privacy considerations and also band network bandwidth and so on. That takes time too, right? So for example, if you're doing some augmented reality application, you cannot really pass everything to the cloud, do everything there and pass it, because then you will have very um, large lag. You have to do some processing on the device directly, otherwise the experience would be not too good, right? So some trade-offs. So uh, we, we had like different research papers which were discussing those different topics. Um, for this year, what I'm thinking of is that we will have a common theme that we will use, we will still read papers and we will still analyze some of those aspects of mobile computing uh, and mobile devices and the, the, the mobile technology, but we will have kind of an umbrella um, concept which we will kind of always refer to and use as, as an example when discussing those different things, right? Um, and it's a little bit up to us to decide what that common, common project is, right? So what we can do is I can give you some ideas and then you can think about it and on the next, in the next class we can kind of decide what that project actually is, okay? Um, so the way I was thinking of was to, um, to divide the space into some kind of uh, uh, main, uh, main groups. So yeah, let, me, let me draw something. So, um, when, what, what do you do most on, on your mobile device? What do you do? Chat. Chat, yes. So you use it f as a communication device, right? As a device to connect with your family, with your friends, with your peers, and so on, right? So messaging, messaging and chat is the, uh, the primary thing. What else do you do? Taking photos, recording Yeah. So you have um, photos, kind of a media player, um, and recorder. What else you do? Playing games. Games, yes. What else? Reviews. Yeah. So, um, kind of, um, yeah, so this one is slash communication, communication device, and here more like, uh, how would you categorize it? Yeah, access media. Yeah. OK. 
Okay. What else do you use your mobile device for? You can create documents. Like uh, I think we can edit some editing stuff. Like I don't know, editing your files. Yeah. So create create documents. Kind of as a work device. Right, so you can create documents, you can create spreadsheets. Um, can you create software using mobile device? Not, yet. Not really. <laughs> um, but in software development, do you use a mobile device? You often do, like you often use it as a communication medium, like for doing a chat or doing some uh, uh, to check things, right? So it also connects you with the community, right? So here we can say community um, because it's a kind of a connector so you can discuss with other developers uh, what you need to do and so on. You can use it for issue tracker, right? So you can check what is the next to-do item, right? So you can use it as an organizer, right? Um, organizer or assistant. Google, Microsoft, you know, Amazon, they all pushing those digital assistants for, for their reasons, mm -hmm. but they are kind of useful for people. They kind of organize your timetable, you can set up the meetings and so on. They remind you about, you know, things. Um, so what else do you use it for? Online shopping. For shopping? Yeah, online shopping. Online shopping, yeah. Um, so we can put it here. So media news access point, uh, shopping. Kind of like, um, yeah, shopping access point, right? What else? What do you use it in the airport for? Tickets. Exactly. Use it for tickets. Tickets, boarding passes. Right? Do you pay with your phone? Yes. So as a wallet, as a payment mechanism. So games and the payment. Um so those are the main ones. Did I miss anything major? All right. So if we if we take these two, so the if you use your um, if you use your mobile device to to use them as a kind of a um, solution for doing online um, payments or boarding or things like that, what kind of comes to mind here is the identity, right? Um, the identity or authentication. So the identity or identification systems are kind of important for this to work, right? So you sometimes are anonymous in like when you play, but most games we, we play on mobiles, we have to kind of, the systems need to know who we are. So we have the same account, so to speak, for some of the larger games. Like if we play some casual games, sometimes it's totally anonymous, but sometimes you want to retain a history, right? So sometimes you're playing a game and you, uh, scoring some uh, some assets and so on, and then when you come back to that game, you want to be the same person, right? So identity is kind of important that you come back and you are the same person, right? Uh, what is, what relates to that is reputation also, right? Um, so sometimes 
we don't want your real identity to be linked to the identity. We kind of want you to build a certain assets or certain reputation and then reuse it, right? Uh, so those are kind of a, uh, this is one area where I think we can do some work uh, and that links to using the, um, um, the typical use cases for the, um, for the payments or tickets. How this relates to this. So when you're doing a messaging, right? Uh, what, what messaging apps do you use? What's up? Snapchat. Snapchat. Yeah, what else? Messenger. Messenger. Do you use a peer-to-peer -peer messaging? Like um, in uh, WhatsApp, you can have uh, encrypted communication, right? That only the, the, the like end-to-end -end encrypted channels. Do you use that? No? So why, why, why this has been invented? Say it again? Privacy. For privacy, exactly. So here we have kind of a privacy um, and anonymity. Do you have a messaging system where you can message someone totally anonymously? I think Telegram is there. Nobody knows, nobody can read the what you message. Yeah, so Signal and Telegram are kind of an examples of privacy anonymity being kind of important, right? Um, but let's say, um, let's say we have a scenario that uh, you work in group and um, you have to rate each other, right? So let's say we have three people, um, A, B, C. And then if you, if you say, we all contributed to the project exactly the same, right? So person A says, uh, like the ranking is A, B, C com com contributed exactly the same, right? Person B says, no, actually uh, person C contributed the most and A and B, we, we did a little bit less, right? And then person C says, um, I don't know, person C says uh, I and A did the most and B was kind of slacking off, right? So we have kind of a vote of what has happened. Can we calculate what is the most probable kind of a ranking? Like what should the ranking be? C is first. Yeah, so C is first. A is second. A is second and B, right? So based on those, we can kind of uh, say that is the, like, the results of voting, right? And now you need to do this voting. Um, I don't need to know who did what, like who actually voted for those, like who proposed those, right? I can kind of do this anonymously, right? But I need to have a system which allows me to have this type of calculation without revealing of who, of who did which kind of vote, right? Uh, because if this is public, it has some uh, social kind of implications and so on, right? People tend not to openly be honest about everybody in the group because yeah, it's, it's a little bit weird to, to do that. But if you're anonymous, well, you can be honest, right? You can kind of do what you think should be the ranking and then the system can calculate this you know, at the end, and then what we can do is we can kind of say this is not visible, this is kind of hidden in the system, this is visible, so somebody voted like this, or we can even kind of hide this as well, right? We can only kind of uh, show this if we have a provable mechanism to show that this was calculated from this, but this is also hidden. Like, of course, this person knows what they voted, right? What they passed it, but nobody else knows who casted what, right? So, system like this would allow us to do some sort of uh, decision making and calculation uh, with the uh, with retaining the privacy and anonymity of the system, right? So, what we can add here is decision making, right? Decision 
making or voting or I don't know something like this right you get the idea right so that's kind of the, the second one right so one we have is kind of the um, identity reputation how to kind of identify people which is not entirely not linked with this one because anonymity is part of it right so you may have an identity in the system but you might be anonymous to the outside right um, and then we have this which is kind of there is an overlap between this and this but this like this point is different this decision making and kind of using it is a little bit different and this one the kind of a how the identity and how the reputation works is uh, highlighted highlighted here right so then if we um, if we try to build um, a messaging app a, a, a mobile messaging app which is kind of like telegram or signal which is kind of allowing you to be anonymous but at the same time allowing you to do some joint decision making within the system then we can kind of link those two with some of those things and have kind of an example where we can explore how could that be done right uh, and the the interesting thing is that we could potentially reuse it for some of the voting or some of the feedback for like bachelor projects or for something in the class in the classes right if we have a mechanism where kind of uh, group members can kind of rank themselves and have a system for feedback, right? Uh, we had a, a long discussion with the um, with lecturers and with the students about group projects, right? Throughout the bachelor degree, through the three years in, in Norway and in, in, TNU in, in particular, we have a lot of group projects, right? And some people hate them and some people like them and all everybody says there is always someone who is free riding, who is not contributing, right? And it's kind of generally a problem, right? Um, so having some sort of a system which is um, anonymous but kind of um, not easy to, um, to cheat or to break would be a nice thing, right? Maybe it's not possible to build it, right? So what we can do is we can kind of look into various ways and methods of how this is done and kind of experiment with it, right? So if we, if we clear it up a little bit, um, so if I uh, right, so I will. This doesn't link to photos and media directly. I will write this. Um, with games and entertainment, um, there is an aspect of how. Um, how to make this not dull, right? So there is a concept of um, gamification. Okay. And this concept is another aspect which kind of links to this. So I will kind of wipe this. Um, so how gamification links to it? Well, first of all, um, when when do we use gamification? What what we use gamification for? For walking, you have four buttons and you choose one is your app. Yeah, but in general, not 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 in this context. In general, what is gamification used for? Yeah. Uh, you have a basic task that is not uh, per se. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So, can you give some examples? Uh, Anybody? Those games for kids that teach programming. For example, yeah. Do you use any gamified system yourself? Of course, Duolingo is a great example, right? What else? Kahoot. Kahoot is a good example. I have a sports sports watch. What the sports watch does? It 
tracks your tracks my running and tracks my activities and gives me badges, gives me like, oh yes, you need this kind of quest to do things, all right? So generally, physical activity is not kind of a game, but it kind of tries to make it into a game, right? Um, education, right? Memorize. Memorize, yeah. Education itself, right? You kind of come to class, we give you grades. You try to score, level up, and grade more, and get the paper at the end, right? That's a form of gamification, right? Uh, career in, your, in, in a job is a form of gamification. You have, you know, positions, you have, like, career ladders, and then pay rises, right? It's a form of game, it's a form of gamification. Um, some of them are kind of in, like not designed to be kind of a gamification. They just happen to be gamification. But sometimes we try to make a task into a gamification, right? So as, as you were suggesting, we could try to make the voting more feel like it's a game instead of a boring survey, right? Uh, but we could also make uh, the, the whole group work as a form of game, right? So for example, when you have a group meeting, you have to check into the meeting and you get points for checking in. If somebody didn't check in, it, it loses points, right? So then you don't need to vote, you're kind of getting points for certain things. Like if you close an issue in an issue tracker, you may get some points and so on, right? So people who are doing stuff and working and doing things kind of are level up and get more points. And people who are slacking off, they not do, they don't participate, they don't get those points, right? So at the end of the game, you may, uh, at the end of the activity, you may not need to vote, you just need to calculate who, yeah, who scored what, right? Uh, and why. Um, so gamification can be used for getting kind of um, feedback, getting some uh, mechanism for calculating progress, right? That's what we do in education as well. Like we give exams and we give you scores, we give you grades, right? And then you know if you were getting Ds in the first semester and now you're getting Cs or Bs, you, you know you get, you're doing better, right? Um, and, and, and so on. So gamification is kind of an, a, an interesting aspect of it. And also gamification is a mechanism for keeping people in, for um, making people kind of use the device and come back to it, right? Uh, so, for example, um, some games have like some chests or some loot that they give you just by you opening the app, right? You need to regularly kind of go in and kind of check stuff and then you get something in return. And that makes you kind of check things, right? Um, all right, so media news access and um, we will kind of not necessarily do um, uh, shopping and uh, media access, but there is, um, mm, yeah, let, yeah, I will wipe it, but let's keep that in mind, right? So we have kind of a, an area which is media uh, potentially geolocation, geolocation, potentially sensors. So we can, um, uh, there was a, we, we had a research project some time ago where um, you put a mobile device on the table um, and there is a meeting, right? Three, four people talk, right? And the phone just listens and tries to work out who is speaking, right? Like what are the different people in the meeting and who is speaking, right? And then the phone can calculate how long somebody was talking, right? So the phone will not know who is who, but the phone can say person A with this voice um, um, spectra, th this voice pattern, was speaking for 60% of the time, and those other people were speaking with that percentage, and person C was only speaking like 0.5%, right? So one person was really quiet, and then one person was occupying the meeting, and so on, right? So the phone can actually do that, right? Uh, you can have some sensors, um, for example, checking whether you're outside or inside. So when you are um, using your phone, the phone can tell you that in the last three days, you didn't really been outside much, right? You spend most of your time indoor, right? 
Uh, and there was some interesting research correlating how people feel when they are spending time outside and when they are spending time indoor. And they found out that people who tend to spend time outside rate their well-being and kind of a general feeling higher than people who tend to be indoor mo most of the time. Which is kind of even say, ah, well, it's not surprising, right? You don't get vitamin D, maybe you get a bit depressed and so on, right? It's not a surprising result. What is surprising though is that the phone can do that. The phone can kind of sense uh, using the sensors what you're doing and where you are and kind of calculate those statistics for you, right? So that kind of brings us to this digital assistance. They can be kind of really personal. They can know a lot about you um, because you carry your phone always with you, right? Um, so that's the kind of the sensors aspect. So that's kind of another area. Um, with, the, with the work, create um, docs or use it as a work device. Um, I kind of, we will keep it in mind. I, I think it's a, it's a very good point and it kind of links, links to this uh, because you can, um, um, you can use it as an additional kind of a partner when you're doing kind of a work. Um, so we will kind of uh, keep those two together and kind of put it as an extra So as, it, as an assistant for work and leisure. And then tickets and payments, yeah, we kind of covered it with the identity. So those are kind of a high level, um, high level ideas. And then we have lots of um, additional uh, issues with the technology itself. So we have kind of a, oops, technology issues, right? So what's different between us doing some of those work on laptops and some of those work on mobile devices? We have more storage in a laptop. We have more processing power, more storage, yes. So, so capa capabilities. Those are positive and negative. So capabilities, for example, um, it's much easier to take a phone and make a photo than to take a laptop and make a photo, right? I mean, you could technically do that, but nobody does it with the laptop, right? Uh, some people do that with large tablets, but it looks weird also. <laughs> but with a phone, it's trivial. Like, phone is de facto a camera, right? Um, but in terms of processing power, like CPU power and memory and so on, laptop is, of course, um, bigger, more. Also, like if you have a stationary computer co connected to the internet, it's always connected to the internet. Whereas with your phone, uh, well, you may lose coverage, you may you know, not have Wi-Fi or whatever, so the connectivity is sometimes you're on, sometimes you're not, right? Um, so certain things are kind of, um, like you cannot really run a web server on your mobile phone, right? Would you run a web server with your CV, for example, or personal page on your mobile phone? You kind of could, but you kind of cannot, right? It's, um, so some things like um, you need to kind of consider that. Um, but the really good thing is that the phone is always with you, right? So for example, for messaging, uh, doing it on the phone compared to doing it on the laptop is much more convenient, right? You're kind of always available. I check my Discord on the phone much more frequently than on, on the laptop. Of course, if I'm sitting in the office and I'm in sitting in front of the computer, it's kind of the same. But I don't sit in front of the computer 24 hours a day, but I have my phone 24 hours a day in my pocket, right? Um, so, yeah. Networking, right? So, let's say, um, um, would it be possible to have, um, yeah, so for example, Signal or Telegram, they, um, so one of them sends the message to the sen 
server and then the server forwards it, right? So we have two models. Yeah, I draw it here because it's a. So if we have two people, right? We have two people with phones and they want to chat, they want to message, right? What can you do? Well, you can create a message and send it to the other person and then the person reads it, right? But if what well, that requires a uh, direct communication, right? It requires that this person and this person are online at the same time and they are connected, right? So when you're messaging someone and someone is in the tunnel, in the train, and they are not connected to the network, you can't message them, right? So what do we do instead? Well, we kind of instead we have a server and then this person puts the message into the server and then when this person becomes available, then the message is passed here. Why do we use the server? Because this person might be in the tunnel when this person is not in the tunnel, right? So if, if, if this person wants to communicate with this person, both need to be at the same time online. If one of them is not, the communication cannot happen, right? Uh, so if this one was waiting for this to be online and it works, then it happens. But if, if it doesn't, then it's hard, right? So I don't remember which one. I think it's, uh, I think in, in Signal, everything goes through the server. So it's easier to communicate because you can always send the message, right? With the other one, you can only send the message when the other person is online. Otherwise, you cannot send the message, right? So the message waits on your device and waits until the other person is online. Then you can send it. But it may happen that this person is online, but you're not, right? So it, it, there is a delay between the things, right? Um, with the server, it's a bit more convenient. You can always send a message when you're online, and then the person will get it as soon as they are online, right? So you have those two models. So model one and model two. What are the advantages or disadvantages of those two models? Model two is cheaper. Like, the, uh, the whole communication we have to, to go through the server, you have to like, pay the data. Yeah, exactly. So, so model one requires the third party, like someone needs to be here, Facebook or someone, right? Uh, model two doesn't require anybody to be there, right? It's kind of much simpler in terms of maintenance and um, you know, availability and so on, right? And also it's just one message, right? Uh, this one always requires two messages, right? Um, but as, as we were saying, this one has a disadvantage that it requires the coincidence of, of being online, right? Uh, it's less and less of an issue, right? Uh, maybe in 10 years' time, everybody will be online all the time, uh, no matter what. You know, we will have Wi-Fi in tunnels, <laughs> right? Everywhere, right? Uh, but at the moment, like, you know, if you go back 10 years, that was a really big problem, right? Uh, this model was almost not existent because it was really rare for two people to be online on mobile devices at the same time, right? Uh, today, this is very common, but not 100% yet, but, you know, in 10 years it might be the case, right? Uh, this model, yeah, has some advantages. So, what we can do, we can kind of analyze it, we can experiment with it, and we can try to find out some technology which allows us to do this, which is simple, or do this, which is a little bit harder, right? For this, we need some sort of a peer-to-peer -peer messaging, right? We need to have some sort of a peer-to-peer -peer connectivity, right? Um, in reality, when I have my phone, um, I, I left my phone in the charger, so imagine I have a phone and you have a phone, how can our phones talk to each other? What are the, what are the means for our phones to talk to each other? Bluetooth, right? Do we need anything for Bluetooth? Do we need a network operator? Do we need an access point? No, we don't need anything, right? So if we, for example, were to do this voting system using Bluetooth in the classroom, we actually don't need anything, right? We can be in the desert with no connectivity whatsoever. We can still make decisions, right? Um, we can use, what else can we use apart from Bluetooth? Wi-Fi direct, right? So we can actually set up a mobile device to be a, its own access point 
and uh, all, all of you connect to my access point from my device without the real access point and real operator as well, right? So we could use Bluetooth or we could use Wi-Fi. Uh, we could use NFC, right? We could do the voting by touching our phones, right? Um, we could use real Wi-Fi. We could use uh, data like uh, G GPRS or some other, you know, 3G or 4G connectivity. Um, we could use SMS, right? Uh, we can pack data, like voting is cheap, like, you know, it's just a couple of characters, right? So we can kind of encode it in a binary SMS or even text SMS. Um, so we can kind of experiment. So we can experiment and discuss the technology stack as well for some of the scenario, right? So w what I was thinking is kind of along the communicator, right? Uh, something like Signal or something like Telegram with some novel ideas, some novel properties, right? For example, Snapchat idea was that the messages are kind of uh, short-lived, right? It was the first uh, time where messaging system was used for very kind of um, short-lived messaging, right? Now everybody copied that. You have uh, time uh, timers on most communicators, but Snapchat was the first one to kind of came up with it, right? Uh, and the funny thing is that they didn't came up with it as a clever idea. They came up with it because they, they startup was too small to store all the messages. So they didn't have resources to store them. So they say, well, we actually have to delete your messages, right? That was the idea. It was just kind of a, a, <laughs> a kind of a mistake, right? It wasn't the actual design decision. It was just a restriction of what the startup could do that they couldn't store that, right? And it came up, like it turned out to be very kind of a, a clever idea, right? Initially, people were saying, yeah, these guys are crazy. Like, they're deleting stuff, right? <laughs> Everybody else stores everything, right? Uh, yeah. So, okay. So that is kind of like a brainstorm, right? So those are some ideas and some topics that we will cover in the course. And what we need is some sort of a, a kind of an overarching idea, some concept, um, which is a little bit more than just communicator, right? We can just make a kind of a peer-to-peer -peer messaging app, but yeah, that's a little bit too small. Like we need a little bit more challenge, right? So we could do something with voting. We could do something with anonymous comments, right? Um, for example, you could have um, your mobile devices and you can give anonymous um, um, reviews to the lecturer, right? That would be useful, right? But what if one of you is really asshole and abuses it and always makes profanities and so on, right? It's through the system, right? How could we prevent that? How could we make a system that allows you to give anonymous feedback to the lecturer but prevents kind of abuse because it's anonymous, right? That's already kind of an interesting dilemma, right? Because now we have to trade. Like if it's truly anonymous, you can always abuse it, right? Uh, but now we will say, okay, it's not like 100% anonymous. There is a little bit of anonymity, but enough to prevent abuse, right? Um, so that kind of goes back to the reputation, right? <coughs> so for example, um, and, and a lot of systems do that. A lot of games do that, right? So when you enter the system, you're not trusted, right? because you might be an asshole or troll, right? So you have certain limitations of what can you do, right? So for example, if you're not trusted, maybe you're limited to only having one message per day, right? Or one message per lecture, and you cannot do more, right? So you can still do abuse, but it's very limited, right? And as you send more and more messages, and those messages are not abusive, then your reputation kind of grows. And as it grows and reaches certain threshold, then you're allowed to do more, right? Stack Overflow wo works this way, right? If you register to Stack Overflow, initially you cannot really do much, right? Uh, but as you gain trust in the system, you can upvote, you can do comments, you can do more, and you can even edit somebody else's answers once the system trusts you that you're not a troll and not you you're not kind of abusing it, right? Um, so this, this kind of boils down to, to this, like, we're not revealing your identity, but we're kind of building kind of trust in the system through building up your reputation, right? So what I want you to do is I want you to think what might be cool thing to do this semester in terms of a mobile app, which has something, this will be a, a, a kind of a, a common 
baseline, right? We will do a communicator. We will do kind of a distributed uh, communicator for chat, right? Uh, that's the basic functionality. But what else? What else would we like this sort of mechanism to have such that we can use it for some something useful um, like voting or um, making some decision, like if we have two conflicting things or like maybe even voting on opinions, right? So like, let's say uh, we have some, um, we could have a mechanism for people to provide some, to propose a topic and then the group members kind of agree should, or, or a task, and should that be in or out, right? Uh, simple like that, right? So that in itself is kind of complicated because again, you may have people who have a lot of ideas which are stupid, right? Um, so then they can spam the system, right? If, if you have to vote on hundreds of ideas, you say, I'm not gonna do that, right? Too much work, right? Um, so you need some sort of pre-filtering pre that like one or two people check if the idea actually has some merit and should be voted by a larger group, right? Um, so we can kind of discuss it. <coughs> so you get, the, you get the idea? So the baseline will be the communicator, but what else do we want? Do we want to do a little bit more with reputation? Do we want to do a little bit more with gamification? Do we want to do a little bit more with um, like privacy anonymity? Like, do we care if the communicator is anonymous? I think we do, because for example, for voting or for some sort of feedback, we, you know, we want the anonymity to be in, but we want to prevent the abuse. Um, and then what could that be? Like, uh, I have some ideas, as I said, like I really like it for detecting free riders and group projects or for ranking who contributed what. A lot of time um, you have a group, let's say with three people and one person is really hardworking, right? He did or she did most of the work, right? But that person is like uh, modest and like says, no, nah, no, nah, you know, it was a group work and the group gets the same grade, right? Sometimes one of the other guys says, no, this person really did a lot, right? Uh, but most of the time it doesn't happen, right? Um, so maybe system like that would help to kind of uh, bubble up some, some of the really good people to get a higher grade or something, right? I, I don't know. Um, you can look in your own context, like what would you find useful in your own um, you know, life or whatever you need, right? Um, yeah. All right. So I will kind of um, close it today, and some of it, some of the choice of topics will depend on how many people we have, and also on what you, your ideas will be next week, right? So wh wh what I want you to do ne for next week is um, think what would you like the overall system to be, and it can be very big like the idea, because we're not going to finish it, right? What we will do is we will kind of use it as a, as a reference, as a hook, but we don't necessarily need to implement everything, right? Um, so let's say we decided to do something for voting, that's great, we will kind of describe it, that, that that's the umbrella, and we will analyze different aspects of it, and we may, for example, just implement the basic communication layer, right? If there are people keen to do that. Um, so the idea is not necessarily for us to do it, the idea, the idea is to have a hook that we can refer to and use as a, as a kind of a reference. But we will do research on, of different aspects. So <coughs> those aspects will definitely include the tech. Those aspects will definitely include this kind of a messaging and, and um, anonymity. We will have to cover some UI, like uh, mobile device UI, how to organize it, right? How would be flexible to, to do it? Kind of um, another innovation is the uh, Tinder, like with swiping, right? For choice and for, for voting, right? Um, so th different ways here, but not only on mobile devices, also on wearables, on, on smart watches and so on, right? Um, how many of you have smart watch? <coughs> One, two, do you read your messages on the watch? Yeah, sometimes. Yeah, exactly. It's kind of... Um, do you do payments through the watch? Uh, not, not yet, yeah, me neither. <laughs> um, and uh, so the, the privacy aspects will be kind of dealt with. 
the tech, the UI. Um, the other aspects are kind of optional. So some years we did a lot about gamification and mobile games. Some years we did less. It depends on your interests also, right? Sometimes we had a class full of um, people who play games and are interested in games and we did more topics in games and gamification. Sometimes we did less, right? Same here. We can do more about identity and reputation or less, depending on what the ideas will be and what the, the umbrella will be, right? So we will decide it next week. Um, and then we will kind of also decide who is doing what first and what are the topics, what are the four main topics which we will be kind of dealing with. Does it make sense? Great. Any questions? No? All right. So that, that's it for today. <laughs>